What I'm going to show you guys today is how to draw a folk art landscape. Folk art is kind of a mix between um, really crazy colors and lots of bold patterns and just everyday objects. So to start our folk art landscape, we got to start with the horizon line. That's the point where the sky meets the ground. So you could do a straight horizon line. You could have a mountain horizon line. It could be curvy, whatever you would like to do. I'm going to make mine kind of look like two parts of the hills that kind of came together like this. Now what I want you to do too is decide is it daytime or nighttime in your landscape. If it's nighttime you could do a moon, um, daytime you could do a sun. I'm going to make mine uh, sun in there too. Maybe you want to get fancy and have a moon inside your sun because all these patterns that folk art has you can really kind of do whatever you would like with that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some trees on my horizon line over here and our trees can be super easy. They can really just be ovals on top of sticks. Now that stick would be really hard to color in so you want to make sure you make two sticks right next to each other. That way it's a little bit easier. You could make them overlap each other where one crosses over the top. The trunks of your trees can be as skinny or as fat as you want. Same with your ovals. Maybe you have some little trees way far back. Maybe you have only giant trees. Maybe you just have some bushes where the, the trunk of it is really super short. That's up to you. You can put them all across. I left some space over here because I want to put a barn on that side. You could also do a house. You could do no buildings at all. That's totally up to you. If I was going to make a barn, I'm going to start with this rectangle shape like this. I'm going to remind myself it's a barn by putting some barn doors on the front, making it kind of another rectangle shape with a line down the middle, and then I'm going to put an X on my doors, because to me, barns always remind me of X on my doors. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that kind of goes up from those doors that way, and then I have to remember that this has one, two sides going that way. So I'm going to go out to the side and straight down, and you can see mine got a little bit crazy. You can always make them match or erase one. That's up to you. Now this looks like the front of our barn. If we want to make it look 3D and go out this way, all we have to do is kind of take our edges and give them a diagonal line and then straight down. So diagonal line and then straight down. Now this one up here, if I went a diagonal line, it would turn into that same line over there. I'm not going to do it on this side because I want my barn to kind of disappear going that way. So I've got my barn, I've got my trees. I think I'm going to add some more trees over here, maybe some short ones, maybe some clouds in the sky. I like to make kind of cartoonish clouds that are flat on the bottom, but you could make just nice fluffy clouds, that's up to you. I'm going to make this one go all the way behind. So now what we're going to do is we are going to add some lines on our landscape because this is a really big empty space and that's kind of boring. So what I'm going to do is you could use a ruler, you could use at the edge of a straight paper, you could just go really slow and carefully. I'm going to draw some straight lines that go from the edge. Now they don't all have to be the same thickness. Some can be thicker and thinner. Some can be kind of all over the place. I think this one I'm going to kind of go all the way down that way. So one hill is going to have lines that go this way and then I'm going to make my other hill have lines that go this way. If you just did a straight horizon line, just make them go all the same direction because we're going to break these up even more in just a minute. Then what we're going to do is we're going to break these sections up even more using diagonal lines. Remember, um, horizon or horizontal lines go side to side vertical lines go up and down. Diagonal lines, or I call them ninja chop lines, kind of go at an angle like that. So I'm going to use some diagonal lines and chop these up. The really long ones I'm going to do with two. This one's kind of short, so I'm just going to do one. And I just want these to be not such big spaces. That way I don't have so much to do with one pattern or another. They can go the same way on each one. You just don't want them to be quite so big anymore. Okay. 
You could do more than two lines too if you want. Like I left this kind of a big section, I could put another one in there. We just don't want them to be so much space. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to add some patterns in here, but I'm gonna start with my sun inside the moon. I'm gonna make another ring around it like this. Maybe I want it to look like the sun and the moon are both outside at the same time. You know how sometimes you look out during the daytime and you can see the moon really faint. So now I have the sun out too. I could put some lines in here like this. I'm starting to make kind of this folk art sun. Maybe in my clouds, they have spirals in these parts right here. Kind of to help them look windy. And they could all be different or they could all be the same. I'm gonna make all my clouds the same. Maybe in my trees, some of them just kind of have little swirls like this to help you remember that they're trees. Maybe some are apple or cherry trees. Kind of little circles in there. You could do some, maybe you want it to look like it's a really big fluffy tree. The point is that it's just kind of like fun patterns. And you can do all the same bunch different. Folk art is very much about whatever fun, playful way you want to do it. We try and make sure we kind of keep animals and people and vehicles out of these ones just because it's going to be so colorful and so many patterns it's going to be hard to tell what anything else is. So I've got everything up in my sky with patterns. Now I can start to put some patterns down here. I'm not gonna do the whole thing right away, but you could think about things like stripes and just break some up with stripes. And you can reuse patterns too. If I use stripes here, I could go and put stripes in other places also. It could be polka dots, it could be checkerboard, it could be zigzags, really whatever kind of patterns you wanna do. And if you don't wanna draw them in pencil first, you totally could color them the first time through. 